you guys, today I thought it'd be fun to talk about some of my handhelds. So we're just gonna go through them. I guess I'm gonna start chronologically, like from when I first got them to my newest ones. Oldest to newest. I don't know, we'll see. So let's go. All right, so starting off, we have my yellow Game Boy Pocket. This was the first Game Boy I ever owned and it's yellow. I remember like having trouble deciding which one I wanted. Like my mom's like, well, what color are you gonna want? And I was like, yellow, I want yellow. So here he is, he's in good condition. I took good care of him. I remember the marketing campaign for this. It was very 90s. Like I just remember it was like a two page spread and it had all these like different people with different hair colors for each color of the Game Boy Pocket. And that was one of the most memorable Nintendo advertisements, at least for me. And yeah, I remember I got this for Christmas and I got Super Mario Land 1 and 2 and I was very happy. And I played a lot of Tetris on this thing. A lot of Super Mario Land 2 and a lot of Tetris. Next up, we have the original Game Boy. So this, I convinced my mom to get me at Funko Land when I was little because I saw that my friend's older brother had one of these and I just thought it was cool looking and bigger. And I think I also thought the screen would be bigger. I don't know what I was thinking, but I just was like, I, I wanna have the one that came first. This was like the beginning of Aaron being neurotic for having the thing that came first. It all started with this guy right here. And it's a little banged up, but it's in pretty good condition. And I did like to switch, you know, some days I'd be like, oh, I want to play the original Game Boy. Oh, I want to play the Game Boy Pocket. But I finally came to terms that I liked this one better because it was yellow and it was mine and it was in nice, pretty condition and the screen wasn't <laughs> all scratched. So this guy was my favorite, but I did love him. And I didn't know if I should include the accessories or not, but whatever, I'm including it. So here's my Game Boy printer. I haven't used this in a very, very long time. I should get new paper to print this. But I remember taking pictures of my grandma on this thing, taking pictures of my dogs, and all kinds of things, well, with the Game Boy camera, and then printing it out. It kind of reminds me of those pictures you would get at Chuck E. Cheese. Do you remember you would sit next to Chuck E. in the car, and like, you could get your picture taken? And like, and it's the black and white, like, receipt paper would come out? That's what it reminds me of. It's great. And next up, we have a Game Boy Color. Now my childhood Game Boy Color was the purple one, and that is at my parents' house, and the battery's corroded, and it's very bad, but I can fix it. But anyway, this one I got later for as a Christmas gift. This is the Game Boy Color, but this one is modded, it's backlit, and it's the Pokemon edition, and I just think it's really cute. Like, I feel like I didn't realize how badly I needed the Game Boy Color to be backlit until I got a modded one that was backlit, because I'll play this on the plane, and it's amazing. It is so nice. Like you just get like a Game Boy EverDrive, pop it in, and this is great. This is the way to go. So when I think of the Game Boy Color, I automatically think of Pokemon Pinball and Super Mario Brothers Deluxe and Tetris DX. I remember playing Super Mario Brothers Deluxe and Tetris DX a lot. So next up, we have the Game Boy Advance, and I still keep mine in the case that came with it on Christmas morning. <laughs> My parents got a GameStop case for it and it's just, it's always stayed in there. So I had the Game Boy Advance SP. I guess I should have took it out earlier, but I wanted you to get the full effects of the super beefy case. Anyway, so here is my Game Boy Advance SP. It's in really good condition because I kept it in the case. I took care of my stuff. So when this came out, I remember being so excited because not only is it like really compact and I like the little flippy, aspect of it. It protects the screen, but basically what the first time I was playing it, I was playing New Yoshi's Island and I was like, it's like a mini Super Nintendo and I was just blown away. Like it is just such a good handheld. It's such a great system. So when I got this, I also got it with Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga and I don't play a lot of RPGs, but I played that a lot. So during high school, I didn't have the GameCube. I kind of skipped over that because I was just really busy with school and music lessons and stuff. And this, this kept me going. I was all about Mario Luigi Superstar Saga. I was about the Yoshi's Island remake, all that stuff. And it's just, it's a good system. And now I'm gonna go back and play the Castlevania games for this because I didn't play the Castlevania games growing up. So I'm really excited to um, finally play those, except I'm gonna be playing the Switch version of them because it's just easier, but I don't know. Maybe I'll buy them for the advance. So next up, we have my very first Nintendo DS. This is the Nintendo DS Lite. Of course I had to get it in pink. Normally I like hot pink 
or neon pink, but you know, this is pale pink and this is as good as it could get. But also noticed, I have mine all custom blinged out because this was during the era, this was like the tail end of the era when girls would get their like razor cell phones and like sidekicks blinged out. And I just, I don't know, I saw this sticker for the DS to add some bling to it and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do it. And I'm glad I did because this is like a time capsule of like the mid 2000s. <laughs> So I have so many good memories with this thing, so I was bad, and I had an R4 card. And this blew my mind when it came out, so my friend put a bunch of games on it for me, and it was like, it's like now we have the EverDrives and we're spoiled, but this was like a precursor for that. I don't know, I'm not a tech person, but anyway, I just remember playing a lot of like, <laughs> like I'm laughing because, okay, so I played a lot of Legend of Starfy, that's a good game, but you know what, I just remembered. And this, and this isn't like a top tier game or anything, but it, it was called like Crosswords, Crosswords something. I'll have to look it up and put the cover, uh, put the cover on screen, but I just remember laying in bed and playing it like this and just like spacing out for like 30 minutes, just doing my cro my word searches and crossword puzzles. <laughs> Cooking Mama, new Super Mario Brothers, there was just so many good games on this thing. So I'm going through this right now because I keep it charged, but oh my god, Bust a Move DS. Tetris DS, New Super Mario Brothers, oh my god, so there's so many good memories in here. Mario Kart DS, Yoshi Touch and Go. I always forget that game exists, that game's fun. Rhythm Heaven, oh my gosh. Rhythm Heaven was great. Do you remember the commercial where they have Beyonce playing it? It was like this weird marketing time for Nintendo where they would have celebrities in their commercials. Anyway, so Beyonce played Rhythm Heaven. She enjoyed it, I played Rhythm Heaven, I enjoyed it. But yeah, the legendary- I always call it the Legend of Starfy, I'm sorry, it's a legendary Starfy. I should do a video on that. But yeah, when it comes to the DS, there's just so many good games. I, I love this system, I'm never getting rid of this. It's so cute, it's mine, it's custom, it's tacky, I love it. Alright, and next up we got my 3DS. I don't have the 3DS XL, this is just the normal 3DS. I got this color and then I got a car the same year and it's the same color, so they matched. I thought that was cute. It wasn't on purpose, but it kind of was. I was just really into the color teal that year, and I still am. Anyway, it's not a comfortable system. I, when the uh, 3DS XL came out, I was like, this is so much better, or then the 2DS, and I almost would buy it, but I was just like, eh, I don't know if I'll play it enough to justify buying another 3DS. This is just really heavy. It's not comfortable for my hands. Um, I can't play it too long because it's very uncomfortable. The 3DS, X, the 3DS XL, from what I've played of it, I think I could play longer on it. But yeah, maybe one day I will get one. I definitely find the normal DS Lite more comfortable than the first 3DS. Alright, then up next we have my Target Edition Game Boy Advance. I got this a few years ago at a game convention, and I just had to pick it up because not only is it red, but it just straight up says Target. So every time you play this thing, you're gonna think about Target. It's great. I like accessories and game consoles and stuff that have like retail names on it. Like I think that's why I'm drawn to the Sears telegames era of Intellivision and Atari just because it says Sears. I don't know, I'm weird. Anyway, so yeah, this is just a Target Game Boy Advance. And up next we have the Coca-Cola Game Gear. Now I, in the past year I did a full video on this, so check that out. Yeah, so much like the Target Game Boy Advance, this is a red Coca-Cola Game Gear. And what makes it Coca-Cola is that there was a Coca-Cola game called Coca-Cola Kid. So this is very Coca-Cola, and I'm saying the words Coca-Cola a lot. So yeah, here it is. I just, I don't know, I just really like the classic red look of it. And I don't know, it's like the first time I held a Game Gear, I expected it to be so much heavier than it is. And it's just, it's amazing that I never, I, I was such a Nintendo kid growing up, this didn't even cross my mind to check out a Game Gear. I was like, oh, I just want the Game Boy. <laughs> but these things are cool. I'm glad I finally got one as an adult. So up next we have the infamous Nokia Engage. So this thing, I need the adapter for it, but you know, it's infamous for having some really shitty games on it because this is very early mobile gaming. You know, it's supposed to be half phone, half game system, and it's kind of a mess. But that being said, I do need to get the adapter so I can mess with it for myself. But yeah, I'm just, it's cool. You just have to have it. It's a weird piece of gaming history, so I needed it. We have the Nintendo DSi. I really like this matte blue teal kind of color. 
it's just so smooth and it's very interesting. I've never seen this exact color on a Nintendo product before, so it just always stood out to me. And what else is cool about this is that I also have a case for it. A little carrying case. And it just fits in there like that. And it's a nice little durable case for traveling. It's really heavy. The case is really heavy, so... I mean, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> So I finally have a Sega Genesis Nomad in my life. This thing's insane. Like if I had a Super Nintendo version of this as a kid, I would have freaked out. You just you put actual Genesis cartridges in this thing and you can play them on the go. Pretty sure it eats up batteries, but whatever. It's a cool product and it's cool that it existed when it did. So this is what this is what it claims to be on the back. It says, full Genesis graphics and action in a portable game system. Play your favorite Genesis games at home or on the road. Connect to your TV set for full screen action. But the AV cable is not included. Additional control pad ports allow for two player action. So I've never experienced two player Sega Nomad before, but I'll have to try that out because that seems interesting. But yeah, so this is a cool thing to have. I'm glad I have it in the box. It's very 90s, very attitude, very rad. So yeah, the Nomads are beefy as hell. You got like, it's like the six button controller, you got the battery pack, it says Sega as it should. It's just, it feels very substantial, but it feels comfortable, except the D-pad is a little awkward. It's one of those D-pads, it's not really a D-pad, you know what I mean? But it's fine. Um, it's, it's better than you would think it would be. Sega Nomad. It's just, I can't get over how beefy it is. Every time I pick one of these up, I'm like, damn! That's substantial. Good job, Sega. Okay, so that was a look at some of my handhelds. I did not include any of my Tiger handhelds. I did another video about Tiger handhelds, so I'll link that if you're interested. And anyway, thank you so much as always for watching, and I will be back again very soon. See you next time. Bye!